We'll start off, I'll do a statement, and I'll give the press, you know, I know we sent the press release, release out on our Facebook page to everybody, I'll do the statement, then entertain some questions. I'm Paul Long, I'm the Chief of Spain Township Police Department, Deputy Chief Jim Reddick, right here, just so you know who's here. Hold on here, my mask is getting in the way of me reading a little bit here. Um, okay, well, I'll start with the statement, the press release first here. Uh, on today's date, March 21st, at 0446 hours, the Sylvania Township Police Department received a 911 call from a caller stating that someone had broken into their house. The caller stated that a suspect had smashed in their front door, ran through the home, and then exited out the rear. The caller further stated that they did not see the suspect, but they did have a brief dialogue with him. Uh, shortly thereafter, Sylvania Township officers arrived on scene and began to check the area for the suspect. After a brief period of time, an officer located a male standing close to the front of another residence in the same area as the burglary. The suspect refused to follow the officer's instructions, told the officer that he had a gun, and then fled on foot. The preliminary investigation indicates that as the suspect was running, he reached into his waistband pocket area, turned toward the officer, and raised his arm in a threatening manner. At that point, the officer fired his service weapon, striking the suspect. Uh, additional officers arrived on scene, immediately began rendering first aid to the suspect. Uh, fire was called. Um, the suspect was transported to Toledo Hospital, where unfortunately he was pronounced deceased a short time later. Um, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, BCI, has been contacted. They're on scene now. Um, they will be investigating uh, in order to ensure there's an impartial review of all the facts. And that's standard procedure. We don't do our own. BCI always does the any officer involved shooting investigation. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is that, and I will, you know, entertain questions that you guys have, you and I'll sure answer what I can. You're not, are you releasing the identity of either suspect or officer? Um, good question. Uh, the, the suspect, no, we believe we have him identified, but we've got to be sure of that, and no next of kin has been notified, so we're not going to give the suspect's name. The involved officer was Officer Kyle Andrews. He's been with us a little over two years, but he had six years prior law enforcement experience, so he's an eight-year veteran of law enforcement. Um, so, yeah, but not the suspect's information, not at this time. Again, pending notification of his family. Any other questions? Uh, is there a body cam footage available? There is not. Um, you know, that's something we've been working on with reports and looking at cost and analyzing. At this point, our department does not have body cams, so there is no body cam footage. Where he was shot on his body? I believe legs and um, face is what I was been told. Again, I don't know that that's what they're what I preliminary information I got from the hospital. But more than one shot? Yes, okay. yes. How many shots? Multiple. I don't know exactly because, you know, again, we try to just secure the scene, not do our own investigation and, and, and do that. So that's BCI is. They've got crime scene texts and they'll do all that. I think it's safe to say in the neighborhood of four to four, I think, in the neighborhood of that. As a solo officer, not a just, partner officer? Just one officer, yeah, everybody in Spain Township works solo. And is the officer on paid Yes, the officer standard procedure be on paid administrative leave, you know, until it's determined, you know, it's okay for him to come back. Did the suspect fire their weapon? Did not, did not, uh, in the end, it was determined that's, oh, that's right, you guys didn't ask that. Um, in the end, there was no weapon recovered. It was just the suspect telling the officer that he had one. There was not a weapon recovered at the scene. So, yeah, I forgot, you know, you had, I thought, you were, thought that might be question number one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, so the officer, the suspect reached into his waistband and the officer fired, but there was no weapon recovered? No weapon recovered. No weapon recovered. He made a verbal statement to the officer that I have a gun, was was fleeing, and then as he turned, and I think I don't know exactly all the issues. There was a, a, a coat that may have been wrapped around his arm in some fashion, but again, that's for BCI and their shooting investigation. Now, we are conducting an active burglary investigation. We're doing that, but BCI will be doing the shooting investigation. We're still trying to figure out why he was in that area, what he was doing, did he have any accomplices? We don't know. Um, so we do have an active burglary investigation going on. Our department does. Can you 
kind of talk about that situation where someone does say they have a gun on them. Obviously now the officer alert is extra high and then it ends up they don't. Talk about how kind of tricky that is for them to be prepared in case there is a weapon, but apparently you never know. It, it is tricky. I mean, you know, you look at all the facts. It's what are the facts that the officer knows at the time and what he perceives. In this case, we know for a fact was a good burglary. Uh, the homeowner called, you know, he's your worst nightmare at 445 in the morning. Someone kicks in your front door and, you know, you're upstairs, they're down, and they actually had some sort of conversation with the suspect. I, you know, don't know the details on what that was exactly. Um, you know, so you know that going in, you identify in the area up near a house who you believe is the same suspect. That suspect runs and makes an indication that they have a weapon, you know, makes movements towards you, you know. We can't, unfortunately, it's up to the, you know, the officer has to, it's what he perceives and what he knows and the facts he knows. We, we don't have to wait for someone to shoot at us because the bottom line is if they shoot first, maybe we're never shooting back. Um, and unfortunately that's happened, you know, across the country, it's happened here locally with two Toledo officers in the last year. So um, it's just, it's a, it's a tough call. It's perception and the facts you know at the time and that's what it has to be judged by. And you said you're not sure if there's a complicit, but do residents have any reason to be worried? Of no, at this point, no. I mean, we're sure there's nobody else in the area. We've certainly been all over the scene for quite a while now. Um, like I said, this happened a little bit before five. So no, there's no, no danger to residents at this current time. It's just, we'll be canvassing, you know, all the surrounding homes and um, seeing what we can find. Like I said, and pro we do have a preliminary indication right now that the suspect was up around at least one, possibly two other um, homes in the area. Um, you know, there's uh, ring doorbell cams and stuff, so we're in the area trying to see what we can find in that regards. And when he was, when he was observed by the officer, he was up yes. at the front of another house. Yes. So what was his intention there? What was he doing? You know, who knows? But he was up at the front of another house, so it's possible he was going to break into another house. Yeah. And he was not very far four, maybe four or five houses or so away from the actual initial house that he broke into. Um, you know, and again, certainly part of the investigation that, you know, BCI will get and everything we'll have to see is, uh, we're all curious to know what, what's the, you know, um, I guess the tox screen is going to show on the suspect. Is there, you know, was there any drug use involved? Was there any alcohol involved? You know, what level of cognitive, rational thinking was he doing? Um, you know, because at this point, we're still trying to figure out how did he end up there? Doesn't appear to be from that, from Savannah Township area right there. So how did he choose that house and those houses that he was around? So that's what we're trying to figure out. I know you said you're not identifying the suspect, but can you give any more details on age, race? Uh, race yeah, on he was... He, he, the, the suspect was a Hispanic male, um, 25 years of age. Yeah, if I'm adding that right, I believe 25 years of age, thereabouts. Well, maybe he's going to be 25, so 24. Um, so, yeah, Hispanic male, uh, yeah, for the suspect. So, but again, I don't want to do his name just now. And we don't know for sure, sure. Um, if he's from this area because his, he's got out of state IDs right. um, and from states not even close to him. So that's making it a little bit more difficult. It's really kind of a mystery right now how he ended up there at 4.45 in the morning. I mean, we just, because again, what we know about him with his ID on him, it's not from a state even close to here. So. Did you say what state or? Um, at this point, I think we should just hold probably off. Probably hold off. You know, until we know for sure. Okay. But some, you know, but a good distance away. And how's the family that, you know, that did make the call or was the first break in, are they okay? They were not harmed. Fortunately, I think it was a case of them still being upstairs, suspect downstairs. The dialogue, I believe, occurred that way. I don't know. I haven't talked to our detectives yet. They were interviewed the family and stuff, but I do believe they noted in the call that they didn't see him. They just had a dialogue with the suspect as he was coming through their house. Yes, and you know they're they're awoken by this loud crashing Crash. noise because the front door was just smashed in. So that's how they were they were you know awakened by that loud noise of the door being smashed in. You mentioned he was seen on ring doorbells. Will that video be public? 
Well, that's still part of our burglary investigation right now. So I would say at this point, no. I and mean, again, I, I haven't seen them. I'm just, no, we, like I said, we still have detectives out there. And that's what we've been told, that there seems to be an indication that he was up around another house, up close to it, possibly even two. So I don't even know what that footage exactly shows. I think there's some audio in the footage. Well, and plus, we don't own the rights to any of that rental. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. We can't just ask, and we can ask the, uh, the owners of those cameras to share that with us. To share with us if they don't want to share, you know, we can't force them to share. That, yeah, so. yeah. And so with that, is there a certain number or email that if they do want to share their ring camera footage, where should they, you know, reach out? They go through, yeah, they, well, our detectives would ask them, we'd like, we'd like to see it if we could, and if they choose to share it, they, get a hold of Ring and they make that arrangements and then they can share it with us. I mean, a homeowner can share any video they want with us. I mean, it's their right. I don't think they need approval from Ring, but we never even know exactly, like some people like to post, if you've ever seen the Neighbors app, a lot of people post their Ring doorbell footage on that. When that's posted, we don't specifically have an address to know where that occurred. If you ever look at that and you click, it gives you a circle on a map area. It gives you an idea, um, but you don't know exactly what. We, if we would use the app, which we do on occasion, we reach out and say, listen, we had some cars broken into there last night, for example, or a burglary. Whoever shared this post, would you be willing to contact us? And here's a detective's name and email and, you know, share that with us. So that's how we reach out to people that have that sort of information. We never know the exact address of who had it. Is there a, can you get a timeline from the beginning to like, you know, 911 call to the officer showing up to the officer shooting? Yeah, let's see here. If I'm looking here at my summary correctly, the call came in at 4.46. So 4.46 a.m. the call came in from the victims calling about the burglary. We had officers on scene at 4.48, and I believe it was 4.58, so 10 minutes later, when um, the officer spotted the suspect, uh, and then that unfolded pretty quickly, you know, with him on the radio in foot pursuit saying that, you know, the suspect said he had a gun and then, you know, relatively quickly in a short time frame, the shots were fired. But so roughly 10 minutes from us being on scene when we encountered the suspect. Any other questions? Good. There we go. Is that good? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you waiting there and you guys getting your